<laughs> actually, <laughs> your holiday's fucking ruined, mate. So. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Rooting Around podcast. A podcast where we take a not so deep dive into countries around the world. I'm Kevin. I'm Tom. And I'm Ed. And this week we are in Malawi. Yeah. 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 Exciting. You've been, right? I have. I have been. Tracing Madonna's footsteps. McDonald's. What? Madonna. Oh uh, Madonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> McDonald's, I don't know. Uh no. No, I didn't go and adopt a child. She had two. I didn't go and adopt two children. To get any more? Should. Could. Why? Because Madonna said. Yeah. Yeah. Next time, maybe. Well. Yeah, because it could be next time. It's really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, let's go. Should we go from the top and then you can tell it, regale us of your tales? Yeah, I don't have that many tales, but it was a good trip. So. Did you get a hot dog and then go to a church? Uh, no. It was actually I didn't Times, even do that. But it was actually Times Square and it was a, <laughs> and it was a banquet with a king. <laughs> uh, 118,000 square kilometers. Big. That's 45 times Luxembourg. Oh, that's all. Right. That's I like, right, I like yeah. the nonchalance in which you said it. <laughs> yeah. uh, population, quite small. 19.5 million. 32 times Luxembourg. All right. That's not much. Uh, capital, Lilongwe, used to be Blantyre. And before that, I think Zomba. Uh, well, Zomba? Zomba. Got the independence in 1964. Then it was a dictatorship from 66 till 94. And now it's democratic. Uh, they had to like re-run the elections last time because there's some issues. And another last little. What were the issues? I don't just know. Like some just some bad admin. Admin. Was it? Was it? The, was, it <laughs> was it? Was it the voting machines? I don't. I. I. I don't know. I just know they had to to rerun them. And then one last fact, not very related to anything else. Uh, they haven't won any Olympic medals. Oh, oh sweet. Yeah. Sad, although they do have the fifth best netball team in the world. It's a fact I learned today. The fifth best netball team? Yeah. Women's men's really? team? Uh, have, you ever seen a, have you ever seen a man play netball? I, I don't know. Look, I learned about netball very recently because in my I thought netball was genuinely just like hacky sack type games. You just play in school, you know? But I didn't realise there was like a whole like, I don't know if they're professional, but like a very good national league in the UK. Mm. I had no clue. Yeah. I, yeah, it's a big sport. Netball's like they've they've yeah. got famous football players from Malawi as well, right? No, I can't think of any. Uh, I've got Ernest Mtawali and Peter Mponda. No, not sure. Maybe they're famous in some small unknown league. Yep, yeah. Sunday yeah. League. <laughs> <laughs> the best at Malawi Sunday League. I saw there's a guy on YouTube called Mark Rober. Have you seen him? No, no. He used to be a, a NASA engineer, but he basically went to Malawi and spoke about this project they've got out there where they deliver medical supplies uh, with drones. Okay. And it's like the drone is shot out of a building at like 60 miles an hour and then it like drops a parachuted like bag of blood down to wherever it's needed and then circles back. So they can deliver medicine and blood should they need it in like minutes but it's how far are they shooting it i think you can go up to like 50k away from the hospital yeah that's a big range yeah that's pretty useful though because i was imagining someone with some bloke was float throwing it off a roof no no so, so they're like, proper drones so it's, it's like, going like i thought it was like a you really know like a, a camera hospital. drone like um might as well just bring them into the a e <laughs> 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 yeah just bring them to us way quick <laughs> no it, go, it goes really far but like drops a package and then just circles back that's cool yeah Mega cool. Well, how much do those drones cost? I don't think it's that much. They're thrifty Malawians. Mm. So there's that guy, hopefully we'll get to it, in The Famous People, uh, who's an inventor. Oh, I might not he have taught, him. I've forgotten his name. Apologies. He's done a TED Talk. He taught himself how to be an engineer. What kind of engineer? Did you say William Kampo... Kam yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He's an inventor and author who gained international fame for building a windmill from scrap materials in his village in Malawi when he was just 14 years old. His story was chronicled in the book and subsequent movie, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. He, yeah, 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 he, he was a badass. He went, to, he went to the library, taught himself how to be an engineer uh, and how to build a wind turbine and just built it out of bits. That's so cool. Love to know what he used. Bits. Yeah, what bits just though? Just bits, little bits. A couple of alarm bits. clocks. 
What would you use if you had to build a wind turbine? <laughs> Fence. A good start would be one of them tripods. What I'd probably do is get one of those wind-up solar torches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you need to have that in the first place. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd use. A wheel. I'd get a wheel and a fence. Yeah, makes sense. Some bearings. Wow. <laughs> Some bearings. <laughs> yeah. Guys, quite smart. Uh, I still got a couple of famous people. So the former president uh, and politician Joyce Bander uh, was the lady you're talking about. So she served from 2012 to 2014 and was the first female president in the country's history and is known for her advocacy, advocacy of women's rights and gender equality. Shout out, Joyce. That's something I actually remember. Um, I'm pretty sure I've told this story, but I've met... Met, met, a, uh, met Joyce. <laughs> <Let's get laughs> yeah. dog. Met a police officer in, in Malawi, but it was a woman. And usually you don't expect police officers to be women in countries like that. Mm. It's just that you don't always see women in positions of power everywhere. Mm. Let's put it like that. Yeah, not everywhere in Malawi either. Their like all their initiation ceremonies and stuff. No, I heard of this. No, I heard like, of this. Yeah, it's for initiation for what? For bringing children into adulthood. I don't really want to go into a lot of of detail, but as you can imagine, it involves <laughs> taking innocence away, basically. FGM. Female genital mutilation. Oh, uh, well, I know they do it to the boys. So I would, Circumcision? Yeah. How old? Like, to become men. Whoa. Yeah. Snip, I think snip. so. I think it's... I, well, I fucking... But on a lighter note, they also tattoo and they use body paint in, in a lot of ceremonies. That's cool. But, yeah. Some of it gets... Tattoo body, like glittery. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've got a couple of traditions here also. So there's the Gule Wamkulu. It's a traditional mask dance performed by the Chua people in Malawi. Features dancers wearing elaborate masks and costumes and is often performed at funerals. Okay. Mm. Mm. There's a hyena dance. There's a lot of dancing, actually. I've got some things about dance things, but I want to hear about this hyena dance. So it's performed by the Tumbuka people uh, and it's performed by a man dressed in a hyena costume and it's believed to bring good luck and fertility to the community. I really want to see a picture of that. A man yeah. in a hyena costume. Do you wow. think it's made from hyena? Does he look like a furry? Oh, <laughs> God, that'd be great. <laughs> but like the Lion King's hyenas. Have you seen, um, oh, what's that like weird found footage horror film? And it's called, what footage? Oh, Creep. Have you seen Creep? No. Oh, it's good. Um, and it's like about this this guy who who invites someone to come and film him because he says he's got like terminal cancer and he's like I want to make a video to pass on to my relatives so this like young film student comes up and starts filming him and he's just a fucking psychopath and they end up going on these it ends up getting more awkward and more weird and at the end he puts on a weird wolf costume and chases him around with an axe or something it's, it's brilliant <laughs> um, yeah I'd recommend it I've, I've spotted ruined it now <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother. Well, speaking of, um, I'm coming in early. Speaking of um, hyenas, Talk this week's this week's cryptid is a cryptid hyena. A pro- cryptid hyena, probably with the best name I've ever heard. The Malawi terror beast. Oh, oh nice. yeah, That's pretty good. It's reported from Malawi's Dawa district in 2003, which killed at least three people and severely injured 16 others. It may or may have not been the same same species as a similar an- animal shot in the previous year which had killed five and maimed more than 20 others. How come this one's more famous then? Maybe it's just because the name is, the, the branding's better. The <laughs> brand. You just Googled it, didn't you? Well, there you go. N- yeah. So it's interesting too. It's too. just got good uh, Mystery like, Beast. SEO. Cool. Mystery Beast? Mystery Beast. What's, what was the other one's name? Terror Beast. Terror oh, Beast. Yeah. Come on. That one's surely more famous. Apparently there's quite... Well, the terror one, yeah. Yeah. But the do you reckon we're the mystery, winning the fight? Mystery versus terror. <laughs> uh, is the description like of each of them? They're both very large spotted hyenas. Okay. Like abnormally large uh, with, with the taste for human flesh. The attacks caused 4,000 people to flee their villages and seek <sighs> refuge in district headquarters. They returned with secure armed security guards protection. But this second and more famous terror beast was never found. Oh. Um, that reminds me of uh, we, we arrived in the in one of, in the village 
really small village one day and uh, it was close to an um, animal reserve and someone had been killed by an elephant like the week before something like that like who just ran through the village regular elephant or terror elephant uh or mystery elephant terror mystery what what else could it be when the elephant beast suspicious (laughs) suspicious well they all knew it was him so it wasn't suspicious anymore questionable (laughs) yeah untoward I've got a festival. They, they Sorry, what happened? What happened to the bloke? Got, uh, was what? that it? Was that the end yeah, of the fact? Yeah, he died. The bloke got killed by elephant. Yeah. Talking about someone who died, they've got the festival of the dead. That's uh, sick. When a tribe member dies in the Chua tribe, it's customary to wash the deceased body during a, the burial ceremony. After that, they move the body to a sacred location for purification, slitting the throat and pouring water through the corpse wow. is part of the cleaning process. They pass the water through several so times beautiful. until it's clean. After that, it's collected and used to prepare a meal for the entire community. <laughs> wow, that's dark. Fair play, though. Yeah. The water is, is collected to, like, boil the pasta. Or, well, not the pasta, obviously, but oh, not, yeah, not the body. It's, like, it's oh, like, what you, what's, what's the tea tonight? Oh, we're doing rigatoni. We got, <laughs> <laughs> got Uncle, Uncle Bobby. Rigamatoni. <laughs> rigamatoni, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's cool. Sick. Well, talking about food, I'm gonna. Oh yeah. Keep going. What's like, their, what's their favorite pasta? Uh, it's close to being pasta actually. Encima, which is maize porridge. Very it's enough. like a big, it's big porridge, big, man. Big. It's everywhere. It's like a yeah, but it's not like porridge you get here. It's just like a massive ball of dough, really. Right. Uh, so is it similar sorts. to fufu then? Yeah, very similar to fufu. Um, and usually they serve two side dishes called relishes. One is a source of protein like meat, peanuts, beans, or fish, and the other one is uh, vegetables like mustard or pumpkin leaves. Nice. Um, they've also got the emkvani, which is a stew with pumpkin leaves, tomatoes, ground peanut flour, and then the sobva, which is a sweet beer. Uh, a fermented drink prepared using white maize got, and millet. I've got a beer fact. Oh, I'm not going to let you tell that beer fact because I've got a story about that beer fact. That's Ooh. Remember beforehand, like before we recorded, I told you I learned something that made a lot of sense. Yeah. I know exactly what your beer fact is. So me and my dad, well, we were, me and my family were in a hotel in, in some small whoa, 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 town. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's just quickly roll back to the start of this. Me and my dad. What were the rest of, what were the other what were the females of the family doing? Were they allowed to go out? Oh my god! Were they allowed to come on holiday? Yes, they were there. <laughs> but so me and my dad go. We were you got in, any pictures? <laughs> <laughs> so my family, everyone in my family went to Malawi. There was one evening where we were in a hotel in like a, a small town. Me and my dad Couple were a bit life. thirsty in the evening. So go down how, to the how bar. old were you at this point? Like seventeen or eighteen. Uh, or maybe 16, actually. Uh, what's the legal drinking age in Malawi? I don't know. Anyway, we go down to the bar. Typical continental parenting. And Getting them pissed. We asked for local beers. And the guy's like, oh, okay. And then he shows up with two Carlsberg. And I'm like, what the, f- <laughs> the fuck? That's a bit strange. Anyway, next day, we leave. Drive 10 minutes past the biggest building I've ever seen in my life. The Carlsberg Brewery and we're like oh it was actually local it could not have been more local and now Tom can tell his fact. Malawi is I say home to but it's the location of the only Carlsberg Brewery in the world that's not in Denmark. Why? There's a good reason for that. Uh, Do you know it? Yeah. Please because I'll butcher it. The Minister of Foreign Affairs in like of Denmark in like the 60s or 70s when or maybe later went to Malawi was handed a beer didn't like the beer so he got the biggest business of his com- of his country to come and uh, build a factory build a factory <laughs> and that is Carlsberg in Malawi holy shit bizarre it's like it's a so strange. really bizarre form of like post-colonialism yeah <laughs> oh this is this, this is horrible rather than giving you our Christianity let's give you some Carlsberg <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Carlsberg anyway no, it's no. quite bad actually I'm reading some facts about Joyce Bander she sold the presidential jet she cut her salary by 30% and she pledged to sell off a fleet of 35 Mercedes-Benz cars that the, that the part that the cabinet had in order to help boost the country's economy. What? Yeah, she only lasted two years. So she's probably kicked out by all of her disgruntled, now, I don't know what they drive there, Suzuki Swift driving cabinet members. <laughs> Some sort of Toyota, to be fair. 
probably. Yeah, probably. What's what's the one they always drive in in Lana Dare? Camrys. Did you go to Lake Malawi? Yes, I when did. So Lake Malawi is massive. So we were in the southern part of Lake Malawi, and it's like one of those lakes where you don't see the horizon. Oh, like, it's an ocean. Basically. Yeah, it's an ocean, yeah. and it's so weird that it's not salty. Like it's mm. one of those like where the air doesn't feel salty, nothing feels salty, obviously because there's no salt. It, yeah, um, it's the ninth largest in the world. It's the third largest in Africa. Yeah, it's one of the deepest. It's Second well as deepest in Africa. It's mi- almost a mile deep, isn't it? That's crazy. And it's the most biodiverse lake in the world. She. They've got a lot of fish that get like illegally captured to mm. then send to the Western world for oh, yeah. aquariums and stuff. Oh, yeah. there, there's loads of species that are only found there, and there, there's one. Uh, so it's really, really packed with these fish called uh, cichlids, which is like C-I-C-H-L-I-D-S. And there's like cichlids. But we wrote about one of them in the Not So Fluffy book. Is it still available on Amazon? Yep. Not So Fluffy. Also on Etsy. Search, nice. search that shit out. I could read that passage if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Livingston's cichlids. So most predators rely on superior size, strength, and speed to gain advantage over their prey. In a break from this tradition, cichlids are less hunter-gatherer and more sleepy assassin. Other species scavenging for an easy meal see a fish as lifeless as Jack in the Titanic and move him for a bite. <laughs> like some sort of zombie Jesus, our protagonist rises from the dead and teaches a swift and righteous lesson in not being a thieving little bastard. They literally use themselves as bait and they get what they want. Talk about putting yourself out there. Did you write this hoping that Sir David Attenborough would once narrate a yeah. film about it? Yeah, of course. Speaking of Attenborough, yeah, another famous uh, naturist. Naturist? Nat- naturalist. Naturalist. Yeah. Isn't uh, naturist like living- people who walk around naked? Yeah. Yeah. Livingston <laughs> went through, didn't he? Sorry? Livingston went through. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he discovered, discovered yeah, the he Lake discovered Malawi. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> spoke about this in... Uh, Christianity. In, oh, yeah, yeah. Crossed that continent. Because he did it in Botswana as well, right? Yeah. Which was it the Zambezi then? He had gone through. Yeah. Ooh, was it the con- I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, don't worry. You, know, you don't listen to this viewer for hard facts or even soft facts. <laughs> if you do, well... Uh, you are, you are sorry. <laughs> misinformed. <laughs> to carry on from the fish, I've got some natural history stuff. So, yeah, it's home to hundreds of cichlids, um, most of which are endemic to the lake. It's also home to elephants, lions, leopards, and a variety of antelopes. Not Lake Malawi. Isn't it um, <laughs> national animal, the Thompson's gazelle? Are, are they not home to the big five and the small five? What's the small five? I just read that. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like five animals that are not part of the big five, but still quite impressive. Right, shall I go through the national symbols and then yeah. I'll hit the wildlife very quickly. So the flag of Malawi has three equal vertical stripes of black, red, and green, with a red sun rising in the center of the black stripe. Do you know what it means, the colors? No, do you? Yeah, so the red is all the blood or sacrifice Ooh. on that. Always is. Green is fertile land and black Careful. is... I'm not. It's the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. Uh, and the red sun. It's just the sun. The dawning of uh, I don't know. Maybe brighter future uh, for the Malawi. Dawn of a new day. I don't actually know about the sun, but it's but yeah. filled with blood. Um, and the coat of arms uh, features a shield with the rising sun, a lion, a lion, and a fish eagle with the motto "Unity and Freedom" written below. Nice. The national anthem is. I am not gonna. Dude. I'll try it, yeah. Malungu Dalitsa Malawi. Okay, I thought you were going to sing the whole that, thing. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sing. I'll try and do that every do week. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was God Bless Malawi, which was adopted in 1964 when they gained independence. The national flower of Malawi is the native orchid called Banders Blue. Nice. The national tree is the African baobab. The national bird is the African fish eagle. Badass. Uh, the national animal is African elephant. The national fish is a chambo. That's a type of tilapia, which I think would be one of the ones that gets taken from the lake. Mm. National Game Reserve is Liwande National Park. Been there. That's in the south. 
That's close to the village where that guy got trampled by a, an elephant. Yeah. Makes sense. I went to Liwanda in Majete, which is also a famous. So where's one. the Carlsberg plant? It's somewhere in the middle of the country. Well, maybe not the middle, but it was. It wasn't somewhere remarkable. It was just on the way to somewhere else. They do tours. I don't know. We just drove. We didn't even know it was there. So did you? Did you go on safari? Yeah, we went on several safaris because we stayed at the reserve. So. Did you um, see the little five? What are the little five? Have, Le- you, go- have you Googled, Googled that? that uh, leopards, I think. My, oh, no, they'd be in the big They're five, the big wouldn't five. they? Cheetah. The big five are lions, leopards, water buffalo, rhinoceri, elephants, lions. Elephants, yeah. Yeah. elephants lions, Le- rhino. Leopard. Leopard, hippo. No, water buffalo. It's buffalo. I remember the buffalo being, because I was it's always... Big five. Big. Yeah. So the little five are elephant, Elephant shrew, ant lion, rhinoceros beetle, bu- <laughs> buffalo oh, weaver, and leopard tortoise. Oh, I love oh, that. that. I'm all over that, that shit. That's such a cop I love it. Uh, it's true, though. <laughs> and the what's big five, just to confirm. What's the next big five, then? Oh, cheetah, giraffe, zebra, hyena, warthog. Oh, there's so many. What cool about ones. hippo? I haven't said hippo, have I? No, hippos are there. I'll just blitz through some more naturey stuff. Uh, Malawi has a subtropical climate with distinct wet and dry seasons and often experiences extreme floods, droughts, and earthquakes. Oh, sweet. Okay, all paradise. Bingo. The Shire River, Malawi's largest river, is an important waterway for both transportation and irrigation. Ah, Malawi is located in the East African Rift Valley, which is a region active with a lot of geological activity. Country's got seven mount, uh, several mountain ranges, including the Malunje Massif. Love that. Yep. <laughs> is it jungled? <laughs> I really hope so. It is. It is. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Is it beautiful there? You've been to Malunje, the Massif jungle. Yeah, that's so good. We were in a like small. We were the, we like with a the bed general, and breakfast. I really hope with. Owned by a, a British woman, and it was quite nice. Didn't have electricity. Was all like self reliant. It was pretty cool. She just talked to her mate. Get a wind turbine put in. Yeah, she should. Yeah. There's another mountain range called the Nyaka Plateau. Does that sound no, familiar? I don't know. I, no. We only did the south, a long way south. And okay. Then there's quite a bit of the north as well. I've never met another person who's been to Malawi. Isaac. Has he? <laughs> he spent. He worked there for uh, a charity, I think, for a while. That's cool. But like a couple of months. Oh, but shout out Isaac. So I didn't realize. Shout out Isaac big time. Uh, there's not a lot of other nature stuff uh, apart from their vegetation is savannah mixed with Mion Bay woodlands and montane forest, which is just mountainous Sounds forest. Like the animal yeah. I came across the most was mosquitoes. Fucking hate them because I track them way more than the rest of my family. And really? It was horrible. Why, is, first, why is that? Oh, tasty blood. Yeah, they're drawn to certain blood types. I don't know which, but... I thought um, they, they're also... Aren't they attracted by CO2 as well? Yeah, that's that's how they find you. That's that's how they get you. Wow. Naughty bastards. They're really good at going through the like, mosquito nets as well. It was mm-hmm. the first evening, landed, quite tired after all the travel. Um, it's like still broad daylight, like maybe 3 p.m. I go to have a nap. I'm like... I'm going to be saved. Just put the mosquito net up. I woke up like 75 times. I got stung. It was horrible. That was the first there's day no, I was like... There's nothing worse in life than, <laughs> than, than being in a room when you know there's a mosquito and you can hear it buzzing around. It's, and you, you just, don't hear and you it for ages wanna, and then it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> and, then you're like, and you want to sleep, but you're like, oh, I can't. And it, in Nesby, you just give up and just like, accept you're going to get chewed to, chew to shit. Yeah. I heard something, and it's probably not true, but it could be true, that mosquitoes hunt. Well, they don't hunt, but like they go for you, like they hunt for you in as a couple, woman as in female in uh, male, and the male one makes noise when he flies, but the female one doesn't. But the female one's the one that stings. So you're after the wrong mosquito. What is it? Distraction then? Yeah. Wow. Oh. I don't know if that's true. All right. That's well, I'm going to be hunting down two mozzies now. Yeah, one that you can't hear. But yeah, the good thing is that every time you kill one mosquito, 
you can turn to whoever you're with and be like, they always hunt in pairs. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> Where's been the worst place you've ever been bitten? Not lo- like physical location, but I mean on, on your my, body. On my body. Yeah. Um, it's like the awkward ones you can't... Re- Obviously, you shouldn't itch, but like the awkward ones you can't actually reach with mm. your hands are the worst. Like the your back. Yeah. Anything, oh, anything that's like a cuff or a seam. Oh, line. yeah. I true. got that bit of my foot in a line oh really like just around the ball of my foot here is that the ball yeah it's the heel that's the ball is that actually called the ball yeah oh you're very high arches kev congratulations oh no i'm i'm flexing all right yeah they're normally quite flat actually but i appreciate your uh, observing my feet <laughs> I got bitten here, the cavity of the, um, the oh, elbow. That's the, class. the uh, opposite of the weenus, right? What's a weenus? Weenus is the flappy bit on your elbow. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> bit that you can pinch. Called? Yeah. Oh, mine's uh, really ashy at the moment. It's ashy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called a weenus. Oh, interesting. Uh, and that bit's called your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. Like no, but so. the out- outside bit actually is called a weenus. Oh, <laughs> is it? I don't know what the inside uh, flap is. Oh, the, I got some inventions here. Oh, go ahead. The Malawi stove is a type of wood burning stove that is designed to be more fuel efficient and emit less smoke than traditional stoves. It was developed by a Malawian entrepreneur named Arthur Mpamhanga in the early 2000s. And this does not describe how the stove works at all. Oh, what? Do you know uh, what fuel fact. it uses, at least? Wood. Wood, wood okay. Yeah. Oh, did you say wood stove? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That kind of gave it away. Yeah. I think you cook a pizza in there, probably. Probs. Uh, the chiponde is a musical instrument that uh, is a mouth harp made from bamboo and metal and produces a distinctive buzzing sound when played. This isn't quite an invention, but it's a famous group from <laughs> Malawi. Uh, and they're called the Malawi Mouse Boys. So they're a music group from Malawi that has gained international recognition for their unique blend of traditional African music and contemporary styles. They play instruments such as the guitar, bass, and drums, and their music often features lyrics in Chechewa, the official language of Malawi. Why are they called the Mouse Boys? <sighs> they dress like they? mice? I hope so. <laughs> I just remember the story again from um, one of the times we went to on a safari. We had this great guide. It, it's like one of those guys that are super energetic, but not like too energetic, like not American, uh, but really enthusiastic loves what he's doing and actually it's really an, cares about it's xenophobic but yeah fine oh my god <laughs> coming from you um and he, he was a really really great guide but this one time i just couldn't help myself laugh like when he picked up and it makes sense given that he's like a wildlife guide but he picked up so much shit just opening it to show it to everyone and he just picked up this massive, like, turn, basically. Like, snapped it in half. Obviously, it was dry. And he was like, truly amazing. Look at you straight in the eyes. Like, truly amazing. Like, giving you this bit of shit. And it was like, oh, I honestly love that. Absolutely uh, he was love that it, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, that's how you track. Oh, animals. yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I learned how to do fox and badger tracking really? a while back. And badger shit smells really sweet. It's creamy. <laughs> How does it taste? Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolatey. Uh, yeah. It's like a mixture between peanut butter and Nutella. I once watched a documentary where... Chunky peanut butter? Yeah. Okay. I watched this documentary where um, a woman was tracking a triceratops. And she did the same, a similar thing. She stuck her arm into this big thing of triceratops poo. Yeah. And they was eating berries. Was it was dehydrated. It was sick. Was it a big old steaming pile of shit? Yeah, it was massive. That's um, what one of the guys said. <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum was there. For yeah, the yeah, that's, that's the guy who said uh, it was a big pile of shit. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? that I have that no clue. You lost me. Like Jurassic Park. Oh. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking oh. at getting Jurassic Park fabric as well as the green screen fabric <laughs> to go over my cast. We, can we crowdfund it? Yeah, if you want. We'll set up, we'll set up, a, crowd, we'll set up a crowdfund on this. Right, buy some... me some fabric for my arm. <laughs> How much are they? I'd need to buy the fabric and do some sewing. but oh. Oh, So we can get a sewing machine? No, uh, I've, got a, um, I've got a sewing <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need a sewing machine. 
Uh, yeah, if if you could, uh, we don't have a Patreon, um, but if you could just send us money uh, so I could buy covers for the cast that I'm getting tomorrow. Uh, would like a green screen one. Jurassic Park fabric would be pretty cool. No, like the, the cars from Cars. The cars, yeah. A robot arm. I bet you get some really nice like Marvel character ones. Yeah, you could get like an American, American flag. Oh, with an eagle on it. Yeah. That'd be sick. Oh, like I'm holding an eagle. <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> be really heavy. Maybe you should get like a tattoo sleeve one. Yeah, yeah a tattoo sleeve or a robot arm. Tribal. Or leopard print. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Beans and meat. Just like a, a picture well, like of a it. breakfast. <laughs> A breakfast? No, like the Luxembourg dish. The beans and... Oh, the pork and beans. Pork and what, beans. Is that all this not the same colour, though? As? Each other. I mean, it has, seems like well, a Well, the pork's pink. The beans are green. Oh! It's gammon, isn't it? I was... I Because I was thinking it was more like butter beans. <laughs> but it's more like haricot vert. No, because there's a lot... It's like... We've been over this. Oh, like broad, broad beans. <laughs> For those who don't know what we're talking about, a year and a half ago, we posted an episode about what, Luxembourg. Oh, I don't know, what is it, what's it called? Oh, you've said the word, you've obviously said what it's called. Judmot Gardebonen. Gardebonen, yeah. Gardebonen, which is beans. Well, Gardebonen. Garden beans. Gardebonen. Gardebonen. Garden boners. That works. Boners. Or garden boning. Garden boning. Garden boning. Malawi. Size vulture. Malawi was first inhabited by Bantu groups in the 10th century. What was invented by Bantu groups? Uh, it was first inhabited by Bantu groups. What they, was, sorry? They invented the Modern area. Day Malawi. Oh. After a couple of centuries, British colonized the region, obviously, and it became a, a, a British protectorate with the name Nyashaland. Nyashaland. Yeah. It seems complicated to say for no reason. Yeah. Uh, it became a semi-independent protectorate with a federation in the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyashaland, uh, but it was dis- dissolved off just a decade. Following, uh, in 1964, protect- the protectorate ended, uh, and it became an independent nation under Queen Elizabeth II, and it became a republic two years later. Damn. Yeah. Nice. Do you know what, what's it like over there at the moment? It's Is always, it, it always ranks... Safe, smiley, happy? Apparently they're really... Happy, accommodating, hospitable mm. people. It is very impoverished. It's like consistently in the top five, so the bottom five wealthiest countries, so the top five poorest countries. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always five, one though. of the poorest sure? countries in the top world. Top five. I think it is, that's like it's very, very cur- currently top five. Yeah. Oh wow! I remember when we went. The reason we went there is because it apparently was a good like starting point to like go to Africa for the first time. Because uh, it's like easy to get around, and easy friendly. to get around, mm. friendly, barely any corruption. Mm. So for like a family of Luxembourgish people, pretty yeah. easy to go to. It's a random. It's a hard left, isn't it? Like where does Lux? I I can't imagine where Luxembourgish people normally go on holiday. France, the moon. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the moon is like a big one. Yeah, let's go and see the mine. <laughs> um, but you know, it's oh, more like kind of work tax related. deductible. <laughs> That's more like work related, so you don't really want to go too much. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but it's a but business expense. Hmm? It's an expense. Yeah, it's tax deductible. <laughs> yeah, but then, I mean, the view's nice, but you always have to wear this suit. <laughs> so wh- where impractical. do Luxembourgish people go on their family holidays? I, I don't really know, like this. Spain? Yeah, there's a Italy? big. Uh, Spain, Italy, a lot in Europe, obviously, like quite, quite a lot in North America as well. I don't think You're surrounded by so much culture. <laughs> Like there's <laughs> quite a lot around, yeah. So, uh, so why did you choose? Why did your dad or him, oh, and mum choose Malawi? Just because they wanted to go to Africa, and then cheapest deals on safaris, no doubt. No, actually, it was quite like they went through a, a tour like operator, but we didn't do like the tour. They just wanted to have like an agency who knew stuff, and then uh, they would we'd book stuff through them, but we wouldn't do it like fully. Oh, okay, it wasn't like an itinerary. Like yeah, it wasn't like, an itinerary. It was like a mix. Yeah, basically. Um, and I remember the, the woman that was just not very helpful. She was, I'm pretty sure, French, like based in France, and they just have like an agency there as well. But she was just not very helpful and really lazy. And this one time she was like, oh, sorry, I didn't get a, 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 a reply because of the time difference. And there was no time difference at time of year. I hope someone called her out on this bullshit. Oh, yeah, my dad was not. Very happy. 
but yeah. Livid. They grow a lot of tobacco. Anti. Anti. And really? apparently it's all the, the tobacco isn't, they make a lot of it, but it's not high quality. So I imagine we're talking about your Lamberts and Butlers, your Richmond Superkins, etc. It's weird. Green gold, it was called. Um, what, the tobacco or the tea? The tobacco. Mm. I don't um, remember tobacco. I remember tea, like those huge tea plantations. And it's beautiful because it's so green, like it, it almost looks fake. Oh, it says here, only Kenya produces more tea than Malawi. I'm not sure whether that's in Africa, because I would imagine that the Indians and the Chinese make loads of that. I don't know. You'd think so, though. There's a lot. Well, you know, you would think so is a uh, pretty... I thought it was mostly in Yorkshire and... Oh, of Pe- course, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the Te- Dorset. Te- Dorset. Dorset tea, yeah. What? What's Dorset tea? Is that what the posh southern English tea? breakfast tea. That's, not, that's made of breakfast. It's just made out <laughs> breakfast, yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite tea, Ed? Um, Earl Grey. That was same, same, yeah. same. Oh, Lady Grey's nice as well. Yeah, I've only tried that a couple of times. Yeah, it's a little less floral. Don't know. I like Darjeeling. Oh, I like Roybush. Uh, Roybush. Well. Never Roy-Bosch. had Roybush. Yeah. What's your favourite tea? Tea boys. Tea bagging. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite tea? Yeah, tell Listen us in that? the comments. What's your favourite tea? Has anyone has anyone commented on any of our videos recently? <laughs> yeah, what, what are the t- kind of comments that we get? <laughs> they don't know what they're talking we about. This is <laughs> yeah, a fucking usually, joke. Usually it's Give locals up. who say, well, this was only 50% true. <laughs> hey. It's better than You nothing. know what you fucking signed up for. <laughs> I gave you a 2-2 two, two at British University, so pipe down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll be disappointed, Tom, that, yeah, that comment, someone actually commented that on the Serbia episode. You and your Balkan knowledge, that was so good. Only 50%. Oh. Yeah, but I'm only 33% of the podcast, so I'm keeping this afloat. <laughs> Possibly, yes, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I've so only yeah. been there for like eight days in total. <laughs> I did study at university, but you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Reset. Research? <laughs> Reset. <laughs> oh, no. well, I barely fucking graduated undergrad. I actually just remembered a, a story of like how easy it is to travel there. We landed in Lilongwe and it's a really small airport. It doesn't have like a conveyor belt for the um, suitcases. Oh yeah, what does it have? Just like a a non conveyor belt, just a like pile. <laughs> a, yeah, basically a pile. No, it's like a, a floor. It's like you know when you go to Mackey's and they've got the kitchen and they've got the counter. Well, imagine if the kitchen is like the luggage sorting area and the counters is where they leave the bags that's exactly what it is and we on our flight there was another family of uh europeans i suppose who also had two kids and they had the same suitcase but we had no clue oh god and we you must have started a rumor in malawi that all all whiteies have the same suitcase possibly but we so we're waiting for our suitcase and there's just like nothing coming out and we have either three or one each so either either three or four and my parents are starting to be like oh shit like we might spend like three weeks without our shit here like with like nothing i had the worst way to start they just start looking everywhere i'm just waiting uh by the door and i see this woman with like a trolley and like three or four suitcases that look exactly like ours and i'm like a bit strange so i go and ask i'm like so are these yours or and she's like yeah i'm like okay I go back a bit. She's still waiting there. So I'm just kind of like suspiciously looking. And her husband comes back and they're about to leave. And then I'm like, there's no way these are not our suitcases. So I go back and I'm like, I'm sorry, can you just double check? Because I'm pretty sure like these could be ours. And they were ours. And theirs got lost. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. Eat that. So yeah, That's we went to the... the three ho- stars. Yeah. Went to the hotel and I got bitten a bunch of times by mosquitoes. That was the first day. Well, I bet it felt good though. Oh like yeah, you solve the crime. Win some, you lose yeah. some. Yeah, we could. They could have just left, and how would they have found us? Well, probably quite easily by coming what back. Okay. Packet. Why are they still hanging around? They've got their package. They can fuck off. I think they were missing one because we must have had three, and they were looking for four. Uh, or we had four, and they were looking for five. Something like that. Uh, that's why they were still looking around. That's lucky. And then they were like, "Well, I guess the last one will never arrive. We'll leave." And then I was like, "No, actually." None of your, none of your baggage will arrive. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> no. your holiday's fucking ruined, mate. So <laughs> we'll have those. Well, it would have been ruined either way, even with our stuff. Like they would have just had to wear my underwear. Like that's. Well, at least it's easy to travel there. Yeah. yeah. I've never lost a bag. <laughs> I did. 
Russia. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? That's a, that's a sad one. Came came quite late. I do remember. Yeah. It just turned up. I remember picking it up. Yeah, that was that was a nightmare. What a great day. Have you ever seen some like a fun item on a conveyor belt on its own that should be like in a bag or something? Like a, oh. just like prams and skis and that's shit like that. Have you never fun. seen like Lou Roll? <laughs> no. <laughs> one day. Was there. And it was just I've like a, a roll of toilet paper going around. I was like, <laughs> how the <laughs> fuck does this happen? I think I saw a loose guitar once. Oh. It was like clearly bagged up with something. And I put my yeah. bicycle on a plane a couple of times. Oh, yeah. And it's, te- it's always terrifying. Like, Yours is like a flight case, though, isn't it? It's I used to have a case. flight case. Yeah. And now, before I got that, I... um. I used to stick it once I didn't I didn't put it in a box I just took it to the airport and I was like well this is going on a plane so <laughs> we need to work out how <laughs> and then another time I I went to a bike shop and I asked if they had any spare boxes that the bikes come in mm. I stuck it in a cardboard box but yeah I was always worried mm. and stuff stuff did get broken so I was oh, just there you go. Actually, my, my bag arrived late when I went to South Africa once and I went to I'm pretty sure I told this I went to another city, I land Johannesburg, Bagdan, Harare. I went to a city called Newcastle, which is in between Johannesburg and Durban. It's so quite a big distance, like a four hour drive. And they said, hey, I'll arrive the next day. We'll just drive it to Newcastle. I couldn't wait because I was with other people. Um, luckily, I had spare like clothes in my carry on, uh, my backpack, and didn't arrive the next day. And the third day, I called him up again. I was like, where's my bag? Oh, we flew it to Durban. <laughs> and, so, ah, and then dicks. they had to still drive back the same distance, but just wasted a day. But yeah, then that's like furthest. Right. That's why I always overpack to for the carry-on. Just yeah, in case. I, I always bring spare. But also, you might shit yourself. Who knows? Yeah. So it's always, yeah. always useful. Well, not always useful, actually. You should bring a blanket with you as well, just in case. <laughs> just need to relieve yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I would recommend something. A sponge. A sponge some, of sorts. Something, yeah, something which wicks well. You get yourself a shiwi. No, you need to get yourself a like man, man diapers. Oh, yeah. Or, or you just bring a bottle. Yeah, I should have done. There's nothing With more degrading than trying to <laughs> shove your dick inside a bottle <laughs> and piss into it. If you don't know what you're talking about, last week we talked about Tom... Almost like, weeing myself. Yeah. Almost weeing, and his only solution being a blanket because it absorbs it. And and also, I don't want to piss on a seat on a bus full of <laughs> Burmese people. If it was different people, would it be fine? Or? Depends. <laughs> Depends. In fact, there are some certain places you can get away with it. I Elaborate, <laughs> <laughs> expand. Oh, Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really got anything else to be entirely. Uh, no, I fine. wrote one last thing. Like oh yeah, it's beast. because I um I, I messaged my my family group chat and I was like, do you have any like memories or something? My dad wrote a tree meets nose. Did he walk into a tree? Mm-hmm. Dream eats nose. No, tree, tree eats. Tree eats nose. Uh, well, in the what was it called? M- Mujabe. Is there a uh, leopard tree? No, but it's really not that deep. Uh, but in the what is it called? The mountain range. Uh, the rift. Massive. N- yeah, the massive. Massive. Right? The Mujabe Massif. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Munjambe. Mu- Mujabe. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, so in that uh, mountain range uh, Kev mentioned earlier, uh, in that Airbnb, there was another guest who had like a massive like plus on her nose. And you know those carrying techniques where you carry like logs on your head and mm. they all face like the long way she was walking behind someone like that oh who turned around oh <laughs> yeah just hit her in the nose <laughs> i love that did it hit it straight on yeah like, straight that on way? like no or did it her? no no oh, so did it straight graze? on like imagine if she's not walking she's walking next to him and he turns and imagine, swings it that and it hits her flat yeah. on the face. So imagine they're both walking next to each other and the guy with all the, the logs and stuff and he's like, oh, I'm going to look to my left now and just turn his whole head and everything comes with it and just hits yeah, her in the head. But I, I mean, if, if you're carrying a big log on your head, it's not as easy It's not as easy or convenient to turn as, as you think. <laughs> I know. So that woman must have been pretty fucking dense to like not notice that someone was turning and it whacks her in the fucking face. Maybe it would, it, there was nothing to look at. Also, <laughs> also, she must have been taller than this man. 
Oh, it's a bit of a slant. Like, it's possible. Yeah. Or the guy yeah, was ducking because be of the weight. You know. Would you rather take it flat on like that or across the nose? I, flat on, 100%. You'd rather have it just yeah, flat against it's your got face. a big nose anyway. It might get a bit flatter, but it, I'd rather the side it just gra- gets snapped off. I'd rather it grazes the nose. Yeah, but what if it doesn't graze it? It just completely takes it away. It's not going to take it away. This oh. is, mine's not got, mine's have, you, have you seen Harry Potter? Have you seen Voldemort? How do you think that happened? On a trip to Malawi. That's not true. No, I was walking films. beside someone who was carrying a massive log. Where? You probably really? sold, uh, stole that family suitcase as well. <laughs> He's always up to no good, that Voldemort, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. Um, on that, on that Malawi. <laughs> Shall we find out where we're going <laughs> yeah, in two where weeks? Are we next week. Lebanon. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. Levan. Nice. I've been. Yeah. You've been, been to, to Lebanon, Lebanon as well? Yeah, my cousin studied there and I went to visit him. Fuck, what's your cousin doing there? Studying? Like Erasmus kind of thing, but not Erasmus because it's not in the EU, but you know. Can we bring Lebanese food and eat it next time? <sighs> oh, yeah. Yes. Get some hummus. Bring some oh, hummus. I had, oh, I got so, I got massive food poisoning in Lebanon. Never never had worse food poisoning in my life. Are you shitting into <laughs> towels? <laughs> no, because we had a <laughs> toilet, so I was just shitting and throwing up at the same time. Oh, my whole family got it apart from my mum. Oh, a bit of the old DV, love it. DV, diarrhea vomit. Exactly. You lucky boy. I'm very excited. Yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, Spotify. Yeah, leave a rating. Apple five stars. Podcasts. Yeah, high ratings are preferred. Yeah. Don't give us just okays. Yeah. That's oh, breakfast is okay I didn't do an alpha guest house for my uh, oh, oh, shit. I, I'll be honest with you I did find some hotel reviews but and this is why earlier on we were talking about like who's the type of person who gives reviews Malawi was Malawi is not a rich country it probably has some horrible hotels and but unfortunately the type of people white western tourists don't go to those hotels so they're just it's, it's just a bunch of fucking karens complaining so i'm not going to do it i refuse on principle all right well, there's a first i had great experiences in the hotels mm. good beer heineken's carlsberg carlsberg does it taste different i guess you wouldn't know the difference then uh, no because i don't think i'd drink carlsberg <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> maybe a true connoisseur can be like yeah oh, yes this is malawi and carlsberg darling <laughs> anyway see you next week yeah see bye. you next week bye